Earlier in the chapter, we saw crossed clays and condensations, and now we're going to look at crossed aldol condensations. These are aldol reactions that occur with two different carbonyl compounds. And in this initial step, we're just going to go through the addition products. Um, but if we start off with ethanol and propanol, we have uh, a common issue here, which is that we have two different alpha protons that could be pulled off. And then that means we have two different enolates that could be formed. And we also know that in aqueous hydroxide, our enolates are going to be in equilibrium. And so uh, we're gonna have very little enolate and a whole lot of aldehyde, which means the enolate of ethanol could attack a molecule of ethanol or propanol. And if it were to attack a molecule of ethanol, you would get this first product. If it were to attack a, a molecule of propanol, you would get the fourth product. If we make an enolate from propanol and it attacks another molecule of propanol, you get this second product. If the propanol enolate were to attack a molecule of ethanol, you would get the third product. So this is obviously kind of a mess and not a particularly great setup for any sort of synthetic scheme, since usually when you're trying to do a synthesis, you wanna have a lot of control so that you're not wasting material. If you only want one of these products, you don't wanna to have to throw away 75% of your uh, products. So the issue with this reaction is just that there are too many possibilities. When we react with a weak base, um, that doesn't necessarily favor one enolate over the other. We can form an enolate from propanol or from ethanol. Um, the enolate of propanol has one thing favoring it, which is that the resonance form shows us a more substituted alkene. versus the enolate of ethanol. However, ethanol has the benefit of not having as much steric hindrance on its alpha carbon, so it also has a pretty good chance of forming. So this gives us way too many possible products. That's not usually the goal of a uh, synthesis reaction. Just like with our crossed Claisen reactions, uh, we can also create a smarter crossed aldol plan. Now to do this, we want to have one reactant that has no alpha hydrogens and therefore cannot form an enolate, and also have a reactant that has only one type of alpha hydrogen. So this could be an aldehyde or it could be a symmetric ketone. And you would take your reactant that has no alpha hydrogens and place it in the base. Um, you know that nothing's going to happen to it because there are no alpha hydrogens. And then you slowly add in the reactant that will form your enolate so that every time an enolate is formed, it is more likely to react with the compound that is in excess than to react with itself. And you end up with one possible product. So for example, if benzaldehyde is reacted with acetone, acetone only has one possible alpha hydrogen because the two alpha carbons are identical to each other, and therefore you can get a 70% yield of just one product. You can also use something like acetophenone because you only have that one type of alpha hydrogen, and you can get a pretty high yield of one product. So these examples over here are using ketones. The examples on the other box are using aldehydes as your enolates. Crossed aldol is very common in synthesis reactions. So if you're looking at a product that could be formed through aldol, a useful skill is to be able to break it apart into its two pieces. Earlier, we did this through a retro aldol reaction, looking at an aldol addition product. 
but when you're looking at the condensation product, it can be a little more complicated. So you have to recognize the outcomes of an aldol reaction. Um, after a aldol condensation, your carbonyl is going to be retained and you're going to have an alpha beta unsaturation. So that makes it clear to us that we definitely had this aldehyde and that aldehyde was what formed our enolate. We also have to figure out what it would have attacked in order to create the product. So if this is our alpha carbon from the aldehyde, this must be the carbonyl ca carbon that was attacked, which would give us this. And now there's also a hydrogen sticking off of that carbon. So we know that that was an aldehyde. Now, if you go and check your work and create your enolate and actually go through the mechanism, you'll find that you end up with the compound pictured above. Another way to approach this is to break apart mentally the bond that was formed. So these were the bonds that were formed. That's going to give us this piece and this piece. And then you just have to know where to go and add on your carbons, your carbonyls. So we're going to do a crossed aldol reaction practice problem using an activated hydrogen compound, this nitrile. So because of the nitrile, this hydrogen is actually pretty acidic. So ethoxide is going to be able to deprotonate it to form an enolate, which will then attack the carbonyl of the benzaldehyde. So at this point, uh, the addition product here is going to get protonated. And then since a cold temperature is not specified here, it's safe to assume that this compound would want to dehydrate. And it's important to note that it is the hydrogen, oops, the hydrogen that is on the alpha carbon to the nitrile um, that is going to be pulled off. And since we're in base, we're not going to bother protonating initially. We are just going to kick out hydroxide to give our condensation product. Now you can also do a crossed aldol reaction in a strong base, and uh, this will help you uh, narrow down your reaction outcomes. So this is also called a directed aldol reaction. And the plan here is to deprotonate one compound 100%, and then you'll add in your second compound, which will be your target molecule. This is the one that will be attacked by the enolate. The base that you're going to use here needs to be strong, such as an alkyl lithiate or a lithium amide base, such as LDA. So um, an example scheme here would be to take 2-butanone and add in um, LDA and THF low temperature so that it doesn't end up trying to attack itself or anything. And you add in your target molecule and then work it up with water, aqueous acid, or um, acid and heat if you're trying to go through a condensation. And this would be the addition product. So the benefit to using LDA is that you are able to take compounds that have multiple uh, alpha protons and react them with other compounds that also contain alpha protons without worrying about multiple products forming. But you may be wondering, why can I not do this with a weak base? And the reason is actually pretty simple. It's because of that equilibrium. Once you um, introduce a weak base, you're going to be in an equilibrium between the kinetic enolate and the thermodynamic enolate. So even assuming that 
these enolates do not go back and react with 2-butanone, which they probably would, um, you would still end up with two possible enolates in your uh, reaction mixture. So that when you finally do add in your intended target aldehyde or ketone, you're going to end up with a mixture of crossed aldol products. Um, however, when you use LDA um, or another strong base, you're going to have one predictable enolate, and it will be the kinetic enolate. Uh, our next topic is the intramolecular aldol reaction. Um, this is going to be a cyclization via aldol condensation. And this is actually a really cool problem to have to consider. And we kind of looked at something like this earlier with the um, Diekmann condensation. But you may notice looking at this uh, compound that it has three different alpha hydrogens. which means we have three possible enolates. So we need to start narrowing it down, otherwise you're gonna have a whole bunch of products that you have to draw out. Um, the first thing that you wanna consider is that we have a ketone and an aldehyde. And one of the things that we learned when we first started talking about the reactions of ketones and aldehydes is that aldehydes are much more susceptible to addition than ketones are. So it's unlikely that the aldehyde is going to be what forms our enolate since the aldehyde is more likely to be the target. So we're going to eliminate HC as a possibility. Now to decide between HA and HB, we have to think about what our product would look like. So if we pulled off HA, we would have a ring that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. If we pull off HB, we would have a product with a one, two, three, four, five membered ring. Now, um, now you just have to think about which one would we prefer, a five membered ring or a seven membered ring. Hopefully you're going five membered ring and we wanna pull off HB. So by deprotonating HB here, we also see that we end up with the more substituted alkene in our enolate than if we had pulled off HA. So there are a lot of reasons that HB is the better proton to pull off. Now when the reaction occurs between the enolate and the aldehyde, we know that we're going to make a five-membered ring. So let's go ahead and number our carbons. It doesn't really matter which um, numbers you put where because you're going to end up putting things on the ring anyway. So carbon number five is going to be where our alkoxide ends up. Carbon number one is going to have our ketone sticking off of it. Remember carbon number one was our enolate, carbon number five was our carbonyl. So this bond here is the one that was just made. Now in our next step, we have to protonate. And then from here, uh, we would want to go through the condensation and end up with our um, alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. So we're gonna pull a proton off of uh, carbon number one again and eliminate hydroxide. Uh, because then what we'll have on the side is water and hydroxide, which is not different from how we started, which is why we're able to kick out hydroxide. So a good practice problem, um, identify the starting material. This concept is the same as what it was earlier when we were doing linear aldol reactions. So you have to analyze which bonds were formed in this reaction in order to figure it out. So we have our alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl. That means this must have been our enolate carbon. So we know this so far. The beta carbon would be the original carbonyl. 
So let's go ahead and number these. One, two, three, four, five, six. We should have a chain that is six carbons long. And on carbon number two, we're gonna have a ketone. And also on carbon number five, So this is the starting material for this reaction.